Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on between subjects and within subjects designs in counseling research. So we'll get started looking at some of the characteristics of between subjects designs. So between subjects designs compare separate groups of participants. Each participant generates only one score on the pretest and one score on the post-test for each dependent variable. In between subjects designs, researchers often make efforts to create roughly equivalent groups, either through random assignment or stratified random assignment. And one of the key questions answered by between subjects designs is, are the scores from one group statistically significantly different than the other? So let's take a look at between subjects design, what it might look like graphically. So you can see that we have a group of participants here on the left and a different group of participants here on the right. So these are separate groups with different participants in each group. There's no overlap between these groups. And let's say we want to test out a teaching method to see if it's more effective than the teaching method currently used. So with each group we have a measurement, let's say some sort of standardized test, and one group, the control group, receives in this case the, well it's referred to as the treatment as usual, in this case it would be the, the teaching that's usually delivered and then you see we have the same measurement here at the end. So this first measurement we call a pretest, and the second measurement we call a post-test. Now pretest and post-test distinguishes when the measurements occur in relation to either being in the control group or a treatment group, but the measurement is identical. It's the same instrument. So then looking at the second group here on the right, they have a pretest, then they have the special teaching, the teaching method that the researcher believes is more effective, and then the post test. Again, the same measurement. So I mentioned before stratified random assignment, and I want to show you how this would look graphically. So let's say that we have a sample, and you can see that uh, two of the figures here are gold and six are in green. And let's say that the color gold represents, in this case, male participants and green female participants. And for the purposes of our study, it's important for us to have this proportion of males to females remain the same even after this group is divided into two groups. So you can see here a potential result of random assignment in this situation is that all the males, or you could think of this as most of the males, end up in one group and none of the males, or very few males, end up in the second group. In stratified random assignment, this group up top is divided into males and females and then each group, the males and the females, are randomly assigned to two groups. So you end up with equal numbers of males in the first group as in the second group. So they're still randomly assigned within each strata, in this case males or females, but they're not randomly assigned as an entire population. Now again I use the example here of males and females, but you can stratify a sample by many different characteristics. You could uh, stratify them by socioeconomic status, geography, scores on different instruments like achievement tests, age, and a number of other characteristics. So moving on to within subjects design. So the way that within subjects designs work is they expose the same participants to each level of an independent variable. 
So each participant generates multiple scores, as opposed to a tween subjects design, where each participant generates just one score. Within subjects designs are often called repeated measures designs. And a question typically answered by a within subject design would be, are the scores from one or more levels of an independent variable statistically significantly different than the others? So let's take a look at how this looks graphically. So we can see we have one group here. We have one group of participants, and they're measured. So this would be a pretest. Then we have treatment one. So using my example from earlier, let's say this was a treatment as usual group, or perhaps you're measuring more than one type of special teaching method. So this could be treatment as usual, or the teaching they would normally get, the teaching method they would normally receive, or a special teaching method. They're measured after this teaching method is delivered. And then another treatment, another teaching method is applied, and they're measured again. So you have a pretest here in the beginning, a treatment, another test, another treatment, and a post test at the end. So let's take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of these designs. So the advantages of between subjects designs. All the scores are independent of one another. The treatments can be administered simultaneously. You can't do that with the within subjects design because it's the same participants receiving each level of the independent variable. The scores are not influenced by other treatments. So you don't have to worry about fatigue, practice effects, or carryover effects when looking at a between subjects design. Looking at the advantages of within subjects designs, individual differences are eliminated. Each participant acts as their own control. This is an important advantage of within subjects designs because individual differences, as we see in between subject designs, represent a confound to a study. It's hard to arrange groups so they're perfectly equivalent. There's always going to be individual differences in each between subjects design group that affect the accuracy of your findings. Within subjects designs eliminate those individual differences. Also, fewer participants are required for a within subjects design. Taking a look at some of the disadvantages of between subjects designs, individual differences are confounding. The groups may not be equivalent, as I discussed before. The groups may be exposed to different environments. For example, the temperature of the room, the noise level, the day or the week, or for that matter, the time of the day. And the individual researcher making the observations could be different in a between subjects design. Or the same researcher could simply be in a different mood. You also have the risk of contamination, which is a threat to internal validity. That's where the participants from one group communicate with the participants from the other group and discover the other group's treatment. The participants begin to use that knowledge during the experiment, which changes the outcome. You can also have compensatory behavior, another, another threat to internal validity. If something of value is given to one group and the other group becomes aware of this, pressure to reduce the differences between the groups may occur. And of course, with a between subjects design, more participants are required. And then finally, we'll take a look at the disadvantages of within subjects designs. Within subjects designs often take place over a larger period of time than between subjects designs. So they're more subject to the internal threat of validity of maturation. And this is where a biological psychological or emotional process with a participant changes over the course of the study. And again, with longer studies, the risk of a history threat to internal validity also increases. 
The history threat is when an event unrelated to the treatment occurs during the study and this event influences the dependent variable. You also have practice effects in within subjects designs because the participants are taking the test several times the results could be altered because of the practice they get. There's also fatigue or boredom which can sometimes decrease scores on tests of achievement. There are carryover effects where the participants learn by being tested repeatedly and their performance increases on achievement based tests. There's the instrumentation threat to validity. And again this is a threat that is more likely to occur in a longer experiment. And this is where there's a change in the measure during the experiment. And oftentimes what we mean by this is that the researcher or a research assistant who's making observations, they change the way they score the instruments over long periods of time. And then we have attrition. Now of course attrition can occur in both between and within subjects designs. But the longer a study is, the more subject it is to attrition. And if we go and take a look at the within subjects design, you can see that there are fewer participants required for this design. And if someone drops out during what's usually a longer study, within subjects designs are usually longer, somebody drops out, say, right after treatment one, or several people drop out right after treatment one, a researcher may not have enough participants by the time they get to the final measurement to reliably apply inferential statistics. Now it's worth noting here when discussing between and within subjects designs that there are mixed designs available. So an example might be that you have 50 participants in a within subjects design, so they're being measured repeatedly. And then you have another 50 in a within subjects design who are also being measured repeatedly, but you're using different independent variables. So you can run statistics within each group, within each group of 50, but you can also run between subjects statistics between both groups of 50. The repeated measure ANOVA is an example of a statistic that can handle both within subjects factors, as they're called, and between subjects factors. I hope you found this video on between and within subjects designs to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.